Flow Sheets. Flow, flow Sheets version 2. Hi everyone. This is my demo of a second prototype of a program environment called Flow Sheets. I'm working on to see what it's like to program uh, with looking at real concrete data and not just looking at abstract symbolic representations. So here we've got this grid and we have a block in that grid that you can sort of drag around. And each block has a name of the thing, like A, um, an expression, and the result of that expression. These expressions are right now just Python expressions, because uh, the Python is the thing that I use the most. And we can make new blocks like this and refer to old ones by name, such as A uh, times 10, and it knows which A I'm referring to, this A. And if I change the name of A, it sort of knows I write. It's uh, referring to the same thing. I can also make new expressions. Um, so now this one's called a. If I can say if foo is greater than 10, return yay. Otherwise, return foo and return yay. Yay. OK. Um, in Flow Sheets version 1, I noticed it was very helpful to be able to work with lots of uh, a collection of data at a time, uh, or it each item in a collection of data at a time. So we'll first start by making a list of numbers 0 to 9. And in this version, you can add an underscore. This is just a preliminary syntax, but works for now. An underscore to the name, and then use that in expressions, it'll make a new list of applying whatever this expression is to each value in this list. So 1 times 10 is 10, 2 times 10 is 20, and so on. And because these are in a grid, uh, it's very nice to be able to look and say, ah, this turned into this, this turned into this, and make sure that everything looks okay sort of as you're making it. Um, okay, so I also uh, decided to make a um, I don't have a good name for this. I called it make string, but it's just a box that you can type in whatever text you want, and you can also refer have expressions in here, Python expressions, um, just an interpolated string kind of thing. Uh, it's been I noticed I needed this when I made a couple programs in this environment so far, so uh, I decided to make one. And the best part is that that this uh, like mapping convention of uh, referring to each item in a list with an underscore works in that too, so I can make um, a brand new um, Fast and Furious uh, franchise, new movies in the Fast and Furious. Uh, I like the movie. Hey, has everyone seen the movie uh, Nine Fast Nine Furious? I heard it's gonna. I heard it's really good. <laughs> or uh, let's do some, let's get wild. Uh, or too too fast. Twenty six furious. <laughs> There's twenty six bad guys, I guess. Uh, uh, but yeah, so this like filtering and or sorry, this uh this mapping sort of works over um, uh, multiple expressions. Um, working with lists, uh, collections of data too. I can make a new thing. I want to get all the words in the dictionary. So we'll call this words. And it's pretty long. It's almost 100,000 words long. Uh, we'll make it a little smaller so it's easier to see. And there's lots of weird words here that have like apostrophes and uh, lots of uppercase letters. So I'm going to add a filter to this expression and to say um, the first thing in each word should be lowercase and um, there shouldn't be an apostrophe in each word. And then I'll filter those out and give me just the uh, ones that match this filter here. And I can further filter um, words down by anything that has, let's say, anything that has len in the word. I'm doing this for a particular reason that will soon become clear. 
Oh, let's just add one more thing here and say um, replace everything, any word, any word that has Len in it with my name, Glenn. And there we go. Uh, we have instant punification of my name, like uh, ambivaglens <laughs> or uh, benevaglen <laughs> or buglench. <laughs> I really don't know why, why that's there. Uh, I'm not really sure what blench is here, but that's cool. Um, let me just resize this here. 238 puns, apparently, in the dictionary. Uh, and this is just to demonstrate uh, that there's one nice thing, which is when you scroll anything that is uh, anything that is based on that also scrolls. So you can kind of see, ah, this turned into this, bottleneck turned into bottleglenek, or um, calendar turned into <laughs> caglender. <laughs> Uh, sorry, I'll never not be amused by uh, making puns out of my name. Uh, and, of course, uh, clench will turn into kuglench. Um, yeah, so that is most of what the environment is. There's one more thing that I'd like to show you. It's going to take a little bit to set up. But the real part that I would like to show is that I now have visualizations. So I can render that as HTML, and it has this great multicolored butt here. <laughs> and if any time I update the original string, um, so to say just but instead of butts, for example, or if I just hit enter, it will automatically refresh everything. Um, it generates a new randomly colored butt every time. <laughs> uh, but it's pretty nice to be able to have visualizations. Um, this is a silly use of it but I've used it a couple times in order to uh, actually do something useful instead of something extremely immature, but oddly hypnotic. Um, and there's some other visualizations uh, in there. I still don't know exactly how visualization should work right now. It's just kind of for rendering purposes of changing what it's rendered like, so I can change it back to uh, just see kind of the text in here. And then I just have this raw text view, but, um, and of course I could make a new thing and make that one uh, the same the same thing, the same uh, data, just a different visualization. So this one could be um, what it looks like in JSON uh, with sort of escape quotes, and this one could just be the rendered HTML version. Then anytime I update these, the other ones will update. So going forward, I have two things that I'm mostly concerned about exploring. Uh, this is a very unpolished thing, and I would like to let people be able to use it, including myself. I'd want to make it pleasant for me to use it and for a few other people who are willing to put in a little bit of work in order to learn the system to use it. Um, so I'm going to polish it up a little bit. But the two big research questions I have are uh, what are the purpose of visualizations and what is a good way to use them? How should uh, they sort of work computationally? Because I'd like to be able to interact with these visualizations, but when I do that, what sort of how should that work? Um, how should you be allowed to interact with these visualizations and what kinds of things can you do with them? Uh, I have some ideas, but I am, need to just implement them and see what it's like. Uh, my second question is, uh, how do I start making uh, more abstract things in this um, environment? Because right now, you can do all this stuff, which is great, but you can't really define functions, which are kind of one of the biggest ways of working with abstractions that we know about. For example, is could I make this rand int uh, 0255 uh, expression? Could I just find a way to quickly make three of those and combine that so I didn't have to type it three times. Um, I would like to be able to just kind of type, make a new one of these, type uh, randend from 0 to 255, and then be able to make that a function somehow. Um, I have ideas about how to do that, but I'm not quite sure. But I'd like to start exploring how, how do you start abstracting and how do you use uh, functions that 
you've you've made in the past that you'd like to kind of use in the future so that you can really quickly explore and uh, manipulate data. So yeah, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll have something else to show you soon. Bye-bye.